Anyone who commits a crime in Tijuana will soon find themselves here. La Mesa, a prison that strikes more than fear into Mexicans. Everything's dirty. Just sitting on the toilet is horrendous. And one where Americans feel like scum. I'm a United States Marine. Over there, I'm a hero. Over here, I'm a villain. A self-contained empire governed by one man who rules with an iron fist. I'm very proud. This prison used to be notorious. A jail that houses cold-blooded killers. Fighting back leads to harsh punishments. They just leave us to rot away in here and lock the doors. The inmates, known for having short fuses, keeping things under control as a potentially deadly battle in one of the toughest prisons in the world. Commander Flores starts his inspection in block number one. Every day, up to 20 new prisoners wind up here. Flores' goal is to determine what the mood is like here. Are the inmates acting up at the moment? Are there any gangs forming inside the cells? And where should he start the next raid? For committing crimes like theft, mugging, possession of a weapon, and drug trafficking, each cell in Block 1 at La Mesa holds an average of eight to 10 criminals. They share an area of just four by four and a half meters. Inmates have few belongings, mainly a few pieces of clothing, towels, and small souvenirs from the world outside, all stripped back to the bare essentials. One of the inmates, Abraham Chavez Orozco, at the age of 22, he is one of the youngest in La Mesa. Arrested at the airport for drug trafficking, he was sentenced to five years. He's already done three. That means three years of sleeping, showering, going to the toilet without a single ounce of privacy. Everything is dirty. Just sitting on the toilet is horrendous. I've had a foot infection in the past. The food is bad and unhygienic. And it's freaking hot. Many other inmates have lost all sense of hope, particularly the prison's American residents. such as Taylor Elliott Howard. After all, US citizens have to remember that getting in trouble with the law in Tijuana, just a stone's throw from home, will land them here. Taylor shares his cell with six other Americans. They're kept separate. The risk of altercations with other inmates is too high. I'm being accused of uh, stealing a car, uh, armed, armed robbery of a car. So he said I had two guns, an AR-15 and a 9mm. So he gave me nine years for that. Nine years in La Mesa, penned up in one of the toughest prisons in the world. This is my bed. This is where I sleep, right here. This is where Sean sleeps. This is Troy right here. Over here on the top, we got Brandon. We got Dakota. We got Ty. Mike sleeps right here. We all went into the bathroom. Right here. The sink where we wash our hands. The toilet over here. Right now, as you can see, the water is off. And it comes on only for like a few hours a day. Um, the misuse here is terrible. The living conditions here is terrible. Um, I'm a combat veteran. I'm a United States Marine. I've served in the Iraqi War. I'm decorated. Over there, I'm a hero. Over here, I'm a villain. I can't even make a phone call to my family to let them know where I'm at. But the worst thing isn't the cell itself. Even worse is the fact that the inmates are almost never allowed out. We only get two hours of sun a week. If that, sometimes they cut it short. 
or sometimes somebody would do something stupid on the yard and get it, get it, the yard messed up for the rest of us. So we'll get like half an hour or an hour if somebody messes up. Um, other than that, we're stuck in here 24 hours a day, six days a week. In La Mesa, exercise and fresh air are a luxury. Regardless of whether you're a car thief, drug dealer, child abuser, or cartel killer, the only glimpse any of them get of the sun tends to be through bars. They spend almost their entire sentence in their cells. This means two square meters for each inmate, some for just a few years, others for the rest of their lives. No doubt about it. Locked away on an almost permanent basis without any privacy. In a prison with an ironclad set of rules. Rules laid out by one man. He has had the first and last word on what goes on at La Mesa since 2014. Director Cesar Daniel Ramirez Acevedo. Mr. Director, sir, I'm reporting for duty. There are just a few small abnormalities. Everything is in order. Okay, that's good to know. Every day Acevedo checks whether his prison is still under control and tries to isolate problem cases as early as possible. Before La Mesa, Acevedo had already held the post of director at five other Mexican prisons. Now, he's in the heart of Tijuana, a city where drug cartels battle it out for total domination and where 85% of all murders are related to narcotics. Acevedo rules with the principle of 100% control. No matter what's going on in his jail, Director Acevedo knows about it. The first inmates are allowed outside early in the morning, a moment that puts all of the wardens on high alert. After all, the chance of an attack on the guards, perhaps using a homemade weapon, is never higher than at this moment. The routine is always the same. Between Monday and Thursday, the guards open up very specific cells. On a certain floor of a specific building, the same cells at the same time every week. And only one at a time. The next group cannot be released until all of the inmates are in the stairway. This is how the guards keep the upper hand. For most inmates, the precise moment offers them the only two hours of direct sunlight they get each week. The prisoners are separated over three different courtyards. Thanks to all these measures, inmates can only ever come into contact with just a few dozen others during their time in prison, regardless of how long they may have been in there. This is how La Mesa's director, Acevedo, keeps the risk of illegal trading, fights, and weapon or drug dealing to a minimum. Nowadays, we have a huge number of rules to increase security. They enable us to keep perfect control. These rules didn't exist in the past. We had a lot more yard time, but without the proper supervision. Back then, a different government was ruling Mexico, and we had a lot more problems with gang warfare. At La Mesa, the guards have lost their fight against the inmates on more than one occasion, with fatal consequences. These days, the external security team at La Mesa makes sure even if another riot does occur, nobody manages to escape. Guards protect the outer wall in the center of a Mexican city that is home to millions. An additional safety measure, highly trained attack dogs in no man's land. Should worse come to worse, the guards are equipped with both firearms and grenades. What's more, 
La Mesa places its most dangerous inmates in strict isolation, in their own separate block. Commander Flores continues his hunt for rioters in Section 6. This part of the prison operates on a more or less standalone basis. About 450 prisoners are housed in this section alone. The difference? They are all ringleaders, and they work in organized cartel structures. Their risk potential, extremely high. How's it going? Everything OK? Yes, all good so far. Francisco Javier Villa Padilla, one of the most notorious cartel killers around, sentenced for killing a police officer. Other cases will follow. When he was arrested, police officers recovered five weapons, 174 rounds of ammunition, and 51 bags of crystal meth, among other things. I used to have an amazing life with my family, my kids, my wife, a girlfriend, and I had plenty of money. Things were good. I didn't know what it was like to go hungry, as I could always afford to buy everything. Here in prison, you don't tend to get enough, and it's usually awful. 